Every one of us knows what we can do to improve our relationship with Allah Azza wa Jalla a little bit. What we can give up for His sake, how we can increase His love in our hearts. We just have to put effort. Our time is flying and it's being taken and spent on things. Many of them won't benefit perhaps. Some of them are essential like going to work and like eating you. There's no way around those. But it's just slipping by. And the only way to take it back is again through having a relationship with Allah. Making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Talk about overcoming temptations. So we talked about your heart being filled with the love of Allah Azza wa Jal, this bond with Allah Azza wa Jal, or also with people and that how it, it helps get rid of addictions. Let me give you an interesting way of getting rid of temptations or not acting upon temptations. This is a true story. This is a sheikh, an Arabic sheikh that I happened upon for the qadr of Allah, يعني, maybe so I can share it with people. And... He, this sheikh solves every problem you present him with two rak'at. Every problem you present him, he solves it with two rak'at. So, and I heard him explaining this. He says, a guy came to me, he said, Ya sheikh, I look at women a lot. You know, one of those guys. You know, he's always peeking at women. I call those brothers at their peak performance. Yeah? So he's peeking all the time and everything. He says, sheikh, help me. I look at women too much. The sheikh said it's really simple, but you have to commit to this. Every time you look at a woman, and I don't mean accidental look or like, you know, you just business dealing look where there's no desire involved, but like look, look. He said, every time you look at a woman, pray to rak'at. Any time of the day, you look at a woman, the way that's in, in, improper, go pray to, to rak'at. See what's happening now? What's the formula? Why does this work? What is the bigger deal for, for Iblis? Does Iblis love that you look at a woman more so than he hates that you pray two rak'at to Allah? He hates that you pray two rak'at to Allah more than his love that you obey, disobey by looking at a woman. True? So he said, every time you pray two rak'at, I mean, you look at a woman, pray two rak'at. The guy said, I'm a kind of a receptionist. There are a lot of women. He said, just pray two rak'at. The guy said, the first day I prayed like five times, يعني, ten rak'at. The next day I prayed eight rak'at, after that six rak'at, then four, then two. Then he said after that, before I even look, if I hear a woman coming, like I hear her voice, she's on the phone, or I hear her high heels, tuck, 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 like that, the shaitan will tell me, don't look. <laughs> if you look, you have to pray two rak'at, and just don't look. And he called the shaykh and said, shaykh, I don't look at all now. Sheikh said, another guy came with the same, with a similar problem. He said, Sheikh, I smoke. And you know the smokers. Make dua. The dua of cigarettes, right? They make dua. Sheikh said, let me tell you something. Every time you smoke a cigarette, make fresh wudu. Even if you have wudu, make fresh wudu and pray two rak'at. The guy said, Sheikh, I smoke two packs a day. He said, make fresh wudu and pray two rak'at. And you know how smokers quit, right? This guy said, the first day, I prayed 10 rak'at. That means he smoked five cigarettes. He went from two packs to five cigarettes in the first day. He make fresh wudu and prayed two rak'at. He said, then the second day, notice the second day only, I prayed four times, يعني eight rak'at. And then the third day, three. The fourth day, two. The fifth day, just one, one cigarette. He, smoked, he prayed two rak'at. He said, after that, every time I want to smoke a cigarette, or I think maybe I should smoke a cigarette, shaitan will come to me and say, if you smoke, now you have to make wudu all over again and get wet and pray to rak'ah. Just, just leave the cigarette. <laughs> so the sheikh then wrote about the two rak'at solution in his book. He said, then a young man read the book and he called me. He said, sheikh, I read about your two rak'at solution and I used to miss fajr. And it would make me so angry to miss fajr. He said, one day, at night, I sat up in my bed, just alone. There's nobody in my room, just like a madman. I sat up in my bed and I said out loud, Wallahi al-Azim, if I miss Fajr tomorrow, I will pray 100 rak'at. And he'll pray 50 times extra salah. He said, Fajr came, no alarm clock, nothing. Iblis said, get up, get up quickly, it's Fajr time. <laughs> he said, for one year, I never missed Fajr. And I would show up before the mu'addin even at the masjid. 
And then they realized that and they gave me the keys to the masjid and now I'm the one who opens up the masjid for Fajr. And I really love this idea of the two rak'ah. The only way it will work though is if you commit to it. And I wanted to share it with you because you might use it for whatever. Maybe one of us in here has an anger problem. Every time I lose my temper, I'm going to make fresh wudu and pray two rak'at. And the Prophet said, when you lose your temper, the shaitan moves you around wherever he wants to take you. Just like the Prophet likened it to how you move a donkey around. You just take the, the, the reins and you steer the donkey anywhere. The donkey just goes with you. The shaitan will make you do things you would never do when you're angry. When you're angry, he makes you do things you would never do otherwise. He steers you like that. So maybe now I want to break this hold of the shaitan on me. And every time I lose my temper, I make wudu and I pray two rak'at. After that, the shaitan would not want you to lose your temper. You're about to get upset, he'll tell you, calm down brother, calm down. No need for two rak'at right now. Maybe every one of us has something different, some different temptation we want to pull away from. Be dedicated and try the two rak'at system. Give it a shot, give it a try. But you have to be dedicated to it. Because the shaitan's with you the whole time. And if he sees that sometimes you do it and then you're just bluffing the other times, well, okay, this guy's not serious. But if you're serious, he doesn't want you to make two more rak'at. And he'll stop trying to entice you. Yes, it is true. I can fight temptations with Allah Azza wa I can't fight it with two rak'at. And I'm not going to allow anyone to come to me and say, you're unrealistic and uh, you need a therapist. Well, some people need a therapist. Some things can be solved. These are actual examples of people who fixed things in their life. And you can't tell me that before therapy was even invented, how did humanity fix their problems? How did the believers know how to fix their problems? How did the believers find comfort? Through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It needs some dedication. It needs some effort on our part. And you make effort, and Allah Azza wa Jal is a shakir and a shakur. He appreciates your effort. Allah Azza wa Jal appreciates. And that is such an important quality for us to understand. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not appreciate, the minute you would start an act of worship, the shaitan would be able to trick you. And you would say, Allah doesn't need this act of worship. And Allah Azza wa is worshipped by the angels. Better quality, better quantity. And I'm never focusing in my salah, so I might as well give up. No. Allah appreciates what you do. And if Allah wasn't appreciative, subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wouldn't take the one little deed that you did and multiply it by ten. And then multiply that by seven. And then multiply that by a hundred. And on top of that, Wallahu يُضَعِفُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ And Allah keeps multiplying for whomever He wills. If Allah was not appreciative of what you did, would He multiply it like that? Just the fact that we have this formula is proof that Allah appreciates what you do. So all we have to do is we have to put some effort towards Allah Azza wa Jal. Fill our hearts with the love of Allah Azza wa Jal. Fight our temptations through our relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. Whether it's a two rak'at, whether it's constant tawbah, whether it's rushing back to Allah Azza wa Jal in repentance, in worship. Just some effort from our part. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man ahabba liqa Allah, ahabba Allahu liqa'ah. Whoever loves to meet Allah, Allah will love to meet them. Think of this right now as you're sitting here and only you can answer this question to yourself. Right now, if death came to us, would we be pleased or not? Would we be looking forward to it or not? Or would we be completely turned off by the idea of dying right now, today? Oh, I'm not ready. I didn't make hajj and umrah. I didn't make this tawbah that I wanted. I didn't pray the way I wanted to pray before I meet Allah Azza wa Jal. So what if you're sitting right now and you hate the idea of meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If that's the case, then right now, as you're sitting here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in His magnificence, upon His throne, hates to meet you. And how heartbreaking is that idea? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates to see you, only because you hate to see Him. صلى الله وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته